Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry. Today we'll be discussing the digital journey for the dentate patient who's soon to be a dentulist. This was a presentation that I uh, gave when I was in London, England on November 10th and 11th, 2017. What I'll be sharing today is a completely digital technique to take the dentate patient and to reduce the bone, then to also fully guide the implants so you get a very, very accurate position for all in four. Now in Nobel Clinician, we're going to do a smart fusion process. We take an intraoral scan, which is a 3D STL file, and then blend it with a CVCT 3D DICOM file. And when you put these two together, you can start to do the digital planning. And what you'll see here is that we have a 3D DICOM file, and as we rotate around with this file, we can merge the intraoral scan on top. So this gives us a view of where roots are, where the soft tissue is, where you know the planning is going to occur. So we can first evaluate this patient to see if we can do traditional implants and this was just not the case. So this was referred to me by a study club from uh, another part of the world. You can see that they wanted to plan all in four because they knew that these teeth would have to be extracted and we'll look at that in a minute. When I'm planning an all in four type of uh, procedure, I like to plan it from the abutment platform. Here you can see the red. And by pl planning from the abutment platform, we can get a kind of a position of how deep the prosthesis needs to be in the restorative space then how much implant space. So the green arrow represents the restorative space and the blue arrow represents the implant space which I'm including the multi-unit abutment. So this is a prosthetically driven protocol. So what I like to do is have the incisal edge to the abutment platform as to be my restorative space and this space is going to be what I'm using from really the gingiva in the mouth down to the incisal edge. And so I want some pressure on the soft tissue when I'm doing an all-in-four procedure. There are many different prescriptions for how much restorative space you need. My restorative space is based on uh, making sure I have enough space for the bar, also the resin, which we need to have bulk, and also the teeth themselves. So if I'm really looking at how far to the implant, it's about 16.5. I take off my 1.5 multi-unit abutment. So looking at this, it's uh, also important to evaluate the transition line. So once we have these things, these are kind of givens. You want to have everything hidden underneath the lip. You don't want to see where the implants are, especially because these are not going to be covered sometimes by soft tissue. One of the neat things you can do in Nobel Clinician is to level the occlusal plane. This is one of my favorite parts of Nobel Clinician. Because when we're doing this, this enables me to evaluate the restorative space, the implant space, and thus the prosthetic space. So this axial-based planning is critical for how I do my cases. So I'll turn on my axial plane, and this is where I'm going to start to evaluate where I want the incisal edge, where I want the occlusal plane to be, so I can start to adjust the occlusal vertical dimension if need be, or to start to test, take care to make sure I'm planning my space to have enough there for the restorative space. So when I'm doing this case, we can look at the, the position that I want the new incisal edge to be, and then I want to have at least 15 millimeters of space. So turning on the axial plane at this position, I'm compensating for the incisal edge here, and then now I'm going to do 50 clicks because each click is representing 0.3 millimeters of space. So by doing 15 millimeters of space, I need to do 50 clicks. So you have to do a nice high restorative scan. So when you're doing your intraoral scans, make sure you get really high on the buccal ridge so you can do this. I'll place my anchor pins at the point of the multi-unit abutment. And this enables me to do some real kind of positioning of the uh, anchor pins so I know where I am during surgery and also so that it's going to kind of hold the lip back and position these implants in the ideal position. So what you'll notice is that we can look at this axial uh, 
the base and start to really get a good feel for where everything's going to be in a spatial kind of orientation because this is really what we're dealing with is how much bone we're going to take away and then how much space is left over to the base of the nose where the sinus is and so we need to know a lot of these kind of features before we start. By rotating the model around we can start to see the AP spread and looking at uh, then some of the restorative needs. But we know at this level how much bone do we have and we can look at each implant and evaluate that and even evaluate where the kind of uh, multi-units are going to turn and, and where they're going to come out of the tissue so we can start to really get a good look at things. So you can see the anchor pin is really showing us some information about where the implant is as well and this is great information for uh, at the time of surgery. So one of the things I like to focus on is this guide sleeve. The guide sleeve when you're doing guided implants is what determines the position of the implant. And so you can see as I go left to right on these implants, this guide sleeve tells us how deep the implant's going to be, what the angle of the implant's going to be. So this is what we have to kind of focus on. And the top of this guide sleeve is nine millimeters from where the implant is. So we have four millimeters for the guide sleeve, plus there's a space under the guide sleeve that is five millimeters shown here in the red arrow. So the total space is shown in green. This space is what we have to work with. And so we can have to know this before we start to look at how this is all gonna function from a point of how we're gonna plan this space. So that space is important, important for us to use. When we're planning to extract teeth, and we can see here the position of the implant is really deep from the occlusal plane, then it means that the angle of the implant is also going to be different. So we can see that the ring looks like it's not even coming out where the teeth are. So this becomes an issue. So here's one of the concerns. If we follow the rules of Nobel Clinician, you're not allowed to have the ring touch the model. So if we do this, we can't get the implant to the depth that we need. So it's not touching on the yellow arrows. But on the red arrow, the implant's not deep enough. So this gives us a problem because we can't perform the surgery when we're using this type of format. So the bone and the soft tissue are in the way. If we start to position the implant where we do want to go by doing the 50 clicks, then we're positioning the implant where we want it to go, but the ring is not in the right position. So we're going to get an error message from Oscar who's going to tell you that the ring is too far or too too close to the to the model. So when you go to fabricate the template which is going to guide the surgery, we can see that the template cannot be manufactured because the objects are not touching. Therefore the resin is not going to be around the ring. So it's not touching the template in the red, but it's too far away when it's on the green. So if we put the implant into position, it's not going to be able to be fabricated. So this is five millimeter rule. We have to use this space very wisely because this is the five millimeters underneath the ring till it's going to be at the position of the implant. So when we're doing this uh, type of surgery, the bone and the teeth are in the way. So we have to use different techniques. So one of the techniques that I like to use is a digital cutback technique. And I can do this on the STL file, which is the intraoral scan file. So we can go in, do some planning, and then cut it. You may be wondering, why am I cutting the file at this point? I'm cutting the file so I can position the ring from the uh, implant planning software within 9 millimeters to the top of the final position of the implant. So I'm going to be using some guide teeth here, which are going to be the canines and the molars, which we're going to save. So these will position the template. So the template is going to be manufactured on the kind of the orangey model on the right. And this is therefore, this model needs to be cut back. After the implants are, are then placed and fully guided, then we can go back and extract the guide teeth and be in a position for doing the all in four. We used to do this using an analog technique, so what we would do is use a desktop scanner to scan a model that I physically would cut back with drills and burrs, and you can see that. This would allow me to get that ring to be in position for doing that first two millimeter drill in this case. So these were techniques we used to use, but now we're doing this fully digital. With the fully digital workflow, 
we're going to take the implant planning software, look at where we want to place the implants, and then look at how we want to cut files around these guide sleeves. So this is a very simple technique. We get the implants into position and then cut around the guide sleeves. So then we would get this new STL file, which I would call STL file 2. And this is going to be smart fused back into the original DICOM file and allow us to plan the implants, to make the template, to do bone reduction. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a new way to do bone reduction with template 1 and template 2. These are some innovative thoughts that I had on placing implants using two templates. So I'll show you this technique. So how does this all work? We would start with getting some patient information, data collection. We would get a CBCT scan of the patient and have a good look at the patient to see if they're a candidate to do this type of treatment. So we want 3D x-ray so that we can blend and merge that file with the 3D intraoral scan. And so this 3D file can then be brought into Nobel Clinician with the 3D intraoral scan and these two files can be merged. So once you have the intraoral scan file, then this file is going to be what the template would be manufactured on usually, so we have to have a very accurate file. So this is a proprietor file at this point, so this is a three-shape file. This will be brought into an STL file, which is a stereolithic file, which is going to be the file that we use to merge into Nobel Clinician, which is the software that I use for planning implants from Nobel BioCare. So you can see the terminal dentition, quite a few posts and cores, um, you know, very, very thin bone, very little bit of bone. A lot of what you see is uh, root tips and uh, things that are left over. Patient is cracking teeth on a daily to weekly basis. If we have a look at the CT, we can see going around, there's some bone around the implants, I mean, around the teeth in the posterior. But we can see as we go through very thin bone, very poor bone to extract and place implants. Lots of multiple bone grafts will be required here. The patient was given different options. She was referred actually to have these teeth extracted and to do an all in four type of treatment. So we can see that as we go around, the bone's just not really great. A lot of this is uh, bony exostosis, and we can see that uh, very thin roots that are kind of protruding, and so just not a great an overall case for implants at this point. The teeth have some mobility and they're very, you'll see as they come out, they're very easy to come out. So the patient did, uh, was given a number of different treatment plans, chose to do the all-in-four. So when we're planning an all-in-four, we like to plan with this cut file so that I know where the abutment platform level is shown in the red line. So the dashed line shown there and then also the seating index. When this template is put in place, we can see that the template is going to show me that it's seated to the proper depth so that this is going to allow me to know that the implants will be in the right position. What I'll now do is to walk you through the case. So we'll go through this a little bit slower so you can see how this case would actually work. So we first plan the four implants based on the axial planning, getting the implants to the position that they need to be. This is going to enable us to know where the rings are so that we can do an STL cutback. So this is going to allow us to see this is where the implant uh, models need to be cut in order for me to place the implants so that the case will be fully guided. So this is going to be the bone reduction necessary within that five millimeter window of space that we can do so that we can plan these implants and get them into a real great position. So you can see the before and after. These can both be merged into Nobel Clinician, but it's gonna be the orange file that's gonna be used to do the implant planning at this point. So we use the blue file to do the first planning to know where the implants are gonna go, then plan the cut, then bring the orange file back into Nobel Clinician. So these are simple techniques you can use, and then we're going to do that smart fusion and start to make the template. So it's this STL cutback file number two that becomes the patient file in Nobel Clinician. And we're gonna design the implants to be oriented around this uh, cutback file. The implants will actually already be there. 
So if we go back to our planning sequence, we can see that we're now at the STL file 2 being merged. So we can start to do different files like the bone reduction template and the implant placement template. So these two templates are actually just print copies of the same file. So the computer is going to generate the template design and we'll do template design 1 and template design 2 are going to be exact replications. So you essentially are pushing the print button on the photocopier kind of idea twice. So you have a 3D printer, you're going to output two exact copies so that the anchor pins are going to be in the exact same position and also the index windows which are shown here in the red arrow will also be in the exact same position. So we can extract teeth, do different techniques to the ridge to reduce it and these templates are going to fit in the same position. So I'll show you how this works. It's uh, kind of uh, my idea that I came up with and it's something that uh, you know, no one's shown me. Maybe other people have done this but this is a technique that I've developed. So how can we get these two templates into position because the teeth are now going to be in the way because we have this tooth to bone uh, type of reduction that is needed to get the second template in, even the first template. So one of the things that I did was to modify the template. You might remember that I said that during this procedure we're going to make two exact duplicate templates. So these templates will be the exact same position for the guide sleeves and also the anchor pins. So template one is going to be my bone reduction template and this will be used to modify the bone and the teeth in the patient's mouth. So we're going to look at the integral surface and we can see actually where the digital file has been cut. And these little areas are going to be used to be the area that we know that we're going to cut back out with the physical drill. So we'll take a, a small thin buffalo burr and go in and cut out these areas. And we're actually are going to cut out not just that, we'll cut out in between. So really what we're keeping is the frame of the template and you'll see here that I'm keeping where it's going to sit on the canines and also where it's going to sit on the molars. So these teeth will be the guide teeth for this case and will enable us to place the template in the exact position for then placing the implants. So we'll also take some interproximal resin away so that it can sit down in between the teeth. So we do this fairly quickly creates a lot of dust, but this, as I said, could be done as a print file in future um, type of template manufacturing. So you can see here that the template is going to fit on the model. So the model was used and, and, and used to generate a denture in this case, so I still like to have models when I'm making my dentures. But we'll have the template number one is going to be used for bone reduction, and template number two will be used to manufacture the implants themselves. It becomes an easy type of uh, procedure to place this in the mouth to make sure that it's fitting well and you can do this on the patient even on a day prior to where you, when you're doing the surgery. You can position this in the mouth and have a good look at it so you know what is going to have to be reduced. We have to reduce teeth, bone and soft tissue. So here the teeth come out really easy. These teeth are just kind of barely hanging on and we'll go back in and try the template in. The template can fit uh, whether the teeth are in or out at this point. And so then we'll go back in, remove the uh, premolars. You can see that's an easy process to get rid of these teeth. So um, then we'll do an incision. And the incision will be so we can reflect and start to do the bone reduction. Now that the teeth have been removed, we'll do a full thickness flap and come underneath and using a molt with our finger behind the malt, we can lift the tissue. Now you can see the position of where the bone has to be reduced. So we'll put the anchor pins in, making sure that the template is seated down on, on the four guide teeth, and we'll put the anchor pins in. And what you'll notice is I'm going to break an anchor pin, uh, or break actually the drill here. As I go in, I didn't pull directly out, so I'll leave that for later, and it's very easy to kind of get after that. You just have to go in and, and cut the end of the template away and then grab the, the drill. So we start to do the bone reduction with the Pico Spur and I'll reduce this down so that it's going to be at the level that I know that the next template will fit. The anchor pins are going to be in the exact same position as well. 
So we do some posterior reduction and get this so that it's going to be ideal for the for the placement of the second template. The second template is going to have the guide sleeves which are going to be in the exact position to put the implants in nine millimeters deeper on the correct angulation and depth of the trajectory that we want. So on this template, it's the unmodified template, we're going to go back in and place this template in the exact same anchor pin area. So this is going to position on the teeth and be positioned back in so you can see the seating reference is ideal and we can also see where the multi-unit platform is going to be. It's holding the tissue back so I can do some reflection of the cheek tissue so that I can see everything. And so this is going to be ideal. So the guide uh, sleeve is now going to be nine millimeters back showing on the green arrow which is going to be where the implant is going to be positioned in that bone that we are going to be. This is a very delicate and precise uh, placement. So when we go to do the case, we can see that the implant placement is going to be anchor pins back in. So I'll pick the two lateral anchor pins first and then start to put the others in. So once we get this in, it, it actually just fits in beautifully because it's been exactly the same as the first template. So this gives us a real great jump on where the implant position is going to be because now we can start to go through our process of going fully guided placement. So a two millimeter drill guide goes into the anchor uh, guide sleeve, sorry, into the guide sleeve. So when we go to position that first implant, we know exactly how far it is to do bicortical stabilization into the base of the nose area. So I can feel that as I penetrate into that area and we can see that uh, drill guide number 2.4, 2.8 goes in and we can start to see that it becomes an exact type of procedure. So this requires some planning on part of the surgeon, the prosthodontist, the dentist who's ever involved in this case, but uh, working as a team you get to have the implants exactly where you want them to be. So when the time is to place the implant, we're using a parallel implant here, so a parallel CC. So it's called a uh, Nobel Parallel CC Conical Connection Implant and we're going to place those implants in so that we can get some torque and then do the final restoration ideally. So where it's quite difficult usually is the posterior implants for placement becomes difficult because you have to know where the sinus is. Here you start on the outside of the mouth then get inside of the mouth and get positioned to have this implant in the ideal location. So if we go to the other side, you'll see again that I'll be able to get this actually fully inside of the mouth. So usually it's not an issue to get these in. And I'll go in with the drill and uh, position the implant. So when we go to place the implants, then it becomes a very simple procedure. So we start the implant, go on a torque that's going to be uh, allowing us to get to at least 35 before we can go to do the full temporization technique with the uh, uh, denture being converted into a final prosthesis. So it's locking in there so you can see that I can do the final kind of torque down and get rid of this template and then we're in the ideal position with bicortical stabilization and having this implant bridge uh, to be a good success story. So we'll remove the final guide teeth and then have this done so that uh, we can start to fabricate the final prosthesis. So we're going to show you a little bit here. We do the final reduction down. We'll put the, the uh, uh, surgical cover screws on the implants at this point and go down to reduce the bone to the cover screws. So this is the final reduction and uh, you can see then we're able to put on the multi units and start to do the conversion and do all those things. So I did use the multi-units with the snap type of feature, which you see on the green arrow. And this feature is enabling you to then snap the temporary prosthesis on. So once you do your conversion, this will snap down and make a useful kind of connection before you do place your screw. And so this little red arrow shows where the snap goes into where the green line is. So as this is fitting together, especially once you have four of them in, kind of snaps in position. So when you're picking it up, I usually do use the screws, but then after that you're snapping it on and off, which does save some time. And this makes it a little bit more convenient for both you and the patient. 
So we did do a final kind of look at how these implants looked and we were able to get this into minimum bone and to get the stability that we need, which is great for this patient. She you know, thinks this is a fantastic solution for her. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and hope you can come and join the YouTube or maybe get me out to your area to do some lecturing. I do a lot of lecturing throughout the United States and Canada. And uh, anyway, I hope you did enjoy this fully guided case, taking the dentate patient into uh, a dentulous situation without having to have a denture. And that's what this is all about, is having quality of life throughout treatment and then also following treatment. So don't forget to log in to the YouTube channel, so use your email, and then you can subscribe for free so that if new uh, videos are coming out, then I can send you along directly by email uh, the new video. And then of course you can follow me around the globe as I go from different locations. Uh, I'll be going to New York next week. So my Instagram is going to show you that. It's at Dr. Scott McLean. If you're not on Instagram, you need to get on Instagram. It's something that's going to revolutionize how you're going to be communicating with your patients in the future. So this is Dr. Scott McLean. And this has been a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry.